Okay, let's go ahead and get started on this, everybody. Welcome back to another 2 p.m. PST YouTube stream. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim, and today uh, we got some more Pega videos to get through. We have uh, no Unreal, so don't. Uh, so we're not going to be doing that. Uh, in an hour, so if you're looking forward to that, sorry, that's not going to happen. Um, you know, I want to kind of stay, you know, in parallel with uh, Blackheart, so I don't really want to go too far ahead in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the content there, or, you know, in terms of uh, you know, working on Unreal when he's not here, okay? It's his day off. We're not going to push him to uh, do any kind of streaming on his day off, okay? So that's not going to happen. Um, but we got some videos to make sure that we uh, get uh, published. And then we got um, Final Fantasy Seven later on tonight. So um, if any of those or something that you might be interested in, then check out my other playlists if you're interested in any of that. Um, if you're just interested in the Pega, then obviously, you know, continue to watch. If you're here live on stream or if you're um, watching these videos later on my in my playlist, you know, remember, got some other videos if, you know, from, from previous uh, topics, challenges, and whatnot. So uh, check those out if you're, uh, if this is like the first video that you're catching me on. If you've been following this entire series, then I wish, uh, I thank you for um, continuing it with me and uh, supporting me through all this. So uh, thank you for doing that. Um, Okay, so a couple things that I want to talk about real quick. Uh, before I get into the disclaimers here, uh, I got some additional... Um, I got some additional emails. Um, okay, so this was concerning the... Uh, the fact that there was uh, some topics that were outside of a challenge. You know, I said, I'm confused as to why you don't just put these kind of scenarios into the challenge itself, add another task, and just put the steps in there. Did they just not work with the next challenge in some way? Um, so they replied back, thank you for your suggested edit. We tried to balance the information we needed to convey to the learner, all of the possible options available with Pega Platform. I will incorporate your feedback into our notes for the next release and see if it's possible to integrate any of the information conveyed in defining the entrance criteria for a stage topic into the challenge. And it should also be, you know, the other topic as well, because they're both, you know, steps that could be put into a challenge or put into their own challenge you know why why make it a topic because you know at least with a challenge you could actually open up the an instance to go through those steps otherwise you know a person would have to kind of go back and forth you know open up you know open up an instance from another challenge get that challenge done and then go back and do, you know, these, um, these other topics, you know, and I find that kind of like a, well, not, not necessarily a waste of time. I just see it as like a missed opportunity. That's all. So, um, but really that's, that's about it on that for the most part. So, um, So yeah, okay. Um, go ahead and close those out. Don't really need to uh, worry about those emails anymore. Okay, so um, disclaimers. Who am I? 
what are these videos, why am I doing it, so on and so forth. So uh, right now, I am currently an unemployed software developer uh, whose last job was um, was Pega Academy. Or not, not at Pega Academy, but um, it was with the Pega environment. Okay, uh, we were, you know, I, I was hired as a contractor. Uh, we were uh, given an authorized training partner to try to learn Pega. Uh, unfortunately, it really was not a good experience. Pretty much for for everybody, I, I would imagine. Um, a lot of us were really unhappy with the training that we were receiving. Um, a good majority, if not like everybody, had gone self-study. Um, we weren't really learning anything from the authorized training partner, so um, we just stopped and and went, you know, did our own thing on it which is not what you really want to have happen. You know, you want the authorized training partner to, you know, maintain, uh, you know, have a, you know, be a teacher, you know, someone that is, you know, respected and someone that, you know, you can uh, get a lot of information from. Okay, should know, you know, that person should know everything that there is to know about PEGA and, and answer your questions. Um, there were questions that we asked him that he didn't have the answers for, and he never uh, he never wrote them. He never wrote it down questions that we had that he had. To, you know, he didn't really know the answer for, and come back to us with an answer. He didn't do that either. So, <laughs> you know, um, it was it was, you know, it could have been better. Um, but, you know, we all pretty much went self-study. Um, uh, the one and only time that I took the certification test, uh, was for 8.6. Uh, I was definitely not ready at the time, but they told me that I had to take it. So, uh, I knew that I was going to fail. You know, I still tried my best, but, you know, I still got six questions less than a minimum. So... You know, I failed the certification, and then it falls. Then it fell to me to try to, you know, continue with the self-study to try to take it again, but that never happened. So that that falls on me. Um, I I kind of hoped that they would send me back into another authorized training partner or a different one to learn Pega properly, um, but that never happened. Uh, I was kind of hoping that once I had the job as a contractor that I would get a proper mentor to learn everything, but that really didn't happen either. I had people that were like going, oh yeah, you can ask us questions, but that was it. Um, so, um, you know, it, you know, by the end, it, you know, at the end of the day, it it does fall on me to try to get the job done and done. But it, let's let's face it, there, folks. You know, when you're learning something for the first time, you know, uh, it's. I mean, some people can can look at something and they can figure it out. They can do it themselves, and they don't necessarily need too much assistance. Okay. Um, but that's not everybody, okay? Let's, let's face it, you know, every, you know, not everybody can do that, okay? Not everybody can, you know, get the information and, you know, it clicks for them, okay? You know, some people, like myself, they need support, okay? So, if you're one of those that needs some support, I mean, you're watching these videos for a reason, you know, um... Hopefully, I, I provide some of that support for you. So, don't be, um, you know, continue going towards that goal for those certifications. Okay, don't give up. Okay. Now, um, I'm not an authorized training partner, and I'm not an instructor. This is not meant for an instructor-led training. Um, I'm not really. I'm not endorsed by Pay at all. So don't don't think that that's what this is all about. 
Okay, this is my own attempt to getting the system architect certification. And, you know, I'm putting down questions in these videos in the hopes that, you know, the Pega community can help me answer said questions. Now, if you have your own questions, feel free to put them right now in chat if you want to. You know, I'll read them. You know, uh, if I don't know the answer myself, then I will see about trying to get that answer for you. So don't be afraid to ask your own questions. Um, or if you're watching this later on YouTube, put it down in the comments. And then, um, you know, if again, if I can't answer it, I will see about trying to find someone that can answer your question. Okay, so uh, don't be afraid to ask those questions. Okay, uh, especially if you do take an instructor led training, you know. Um, you know, if you can, do so. You know, um, it's it's a two-week course. Supposedly, they teach you everything that you need to know for certification, and hopefully, they do a good job with it. Um, but it's you know two weeks. It's packed. Um, it's going to be intensive. They're going to give you a lot of information really quickly. So uh you're probably going to want to do a lot of um offline self study you know to make sure that you are you know retaining the information okay not you know if it doesn't go into long term memory then you're you're going to be in trouble when it comes to the certification okay so um you know make sure that you are you know, getting every, everything that the instructor is giving you. Um, hopefully they know everything that there is to know about PEA. They can ask your questions. And don't forget to ask those questions because um, if there's something that you don't understand, then they need to either figure out a different way of explaining it or um, they need to rewrite those missions or something along those lines. I've already found faults myself in their topics and their missions and so on and so forth so you know i can't be the only one that does it you know you're also going to need to you know stand up and say hey what is this sentence even talking about you know that kind of thing okay um you know don't be afraid to ask those questions you know figure out what's going on because by the end you're going to need to take that certification and five thousand dollars for the instructor like training is not cheap so you know get your money's worth out of it okay so now concerning our topic started this moment in time i'm going to be working continuing with the system architect if you are focused on the business architect side of things then well that's done as you can see now, I can, as you can see, it's been completed already. So these two missions, these two modules, they're done. They've been past videos. So if that's your aim, goal for it, then um, I would recommend going back through my old videos. Um, if you haven't already, these two modules cover the Pega Express delivery. So if you haven't done the mission for the Pega Express delivery, I would recommend that you do that as well as the Pega Express delivery is 12% of the certification. You know, make sure that you get, you know, 100% on that 12%. You know, don't be, don't get the 0%, you know, and suddenly you're at 88 out of the 70 that you need. So, you know, do yourself a favor, learn, uh, learn what you can out of the Pega Express because I don't feel that these two modules does it. Oh yeah, in terms of the system architect, as you can see, we still got, according to them, 16 hours and 50 minutes remaining. So, um, past couple of days, we've been doing the validating data in Dev Studio, uh, trying to, um, trying to understand their validate rules and edit validate rules, and. Uh, to be honest, I don't even know if they understand it very well because um, when I took the module quiz, they were giving us questions and answers that even I was like, oh, what are you talking about? So, um, 
So I've sent those suggestions into them. We'll see what happens. I haven't gotten an official response to it as of yet. So, but I mean, this this particular module is done. Like I said, if anybody from you know that has a lot of experience with Pega, you know, if you're watching this video, then please, you know, go back over those those previous videos and let me know what am I missing? You know, what's what's going on? What what's where's my confusion lie? You know, where where am I? You know, what am I getting wrong? What am I getting right? You know, if I'm getting anything right, um, you know, please let me know. You know, put a t put a timestamp on it and write down like, hey, at this particular moment in time, you know, you need to think of it in this way or something like that. You know, anything you can do is is you know, I welcome. Okay. Um, but I think the next portion of this is the challenge. So let's, let's go move on to that one. So we're validating data and dev studio challenge. Uh, so I'm going to go to initiate, initialize the instance. So Google, Google road customers with standard coverage, provide credit card information during the submission stage of a an assistance request case to pay for services performed by the company. To reduce the chance of an error when processing the credit card information, stakeholders want to validate the credit card information provided by customers. A senior developer created an edit validate rule named is digit to verify that the credit card number contains only numbers. I mean, why can't we do that? Uh, configure a validate rule for the enter payment information step to validate entry, uh, entries in the card number field by applying the is digit edit validate rule and entries in the expiration date field by applying the enter payment information validate rule. I mean... I mean, is digit is already a function in Java. So if <laughs> if you're saying that they're basically duplicating an already established function in Java, then then we're how did this senior developer get a job? <sighs> um, um, plus, I mean. Uh, as I demonstrated yesterday, all you have to do is just do parse integer, and there you go. So again, it's it's one of those things where it's like um, you're making it much harder for yourself. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to be going through these two tasks here. Um, there is the challenge walkthrough, so if the detail tasks skip steps or is kind of confusing then the challenge walkthrough should show you how to go through the process okay we're not going to be doing that okay we're not going to be using the video okay we only use it if if i'm if i'm confused about the detailed tasks or i'm not quite sure what they're what they're looking for so then i'll use it but for the most part you know, the detailed task should be descriptive enough to for you to get through it. So, um, so I'm kind of disappointed that they're like, hey, the edit the validate rule. Well, someone else did it. Well, thanks. I mean, maybe, you know, be nice for us to maybe go over that or something maybe let us see it or let us do it because um because i mean that that's part of the job as well 
you know, to create and edit and validate rule, you know, so, oh well. All right, let's go ahead and launch the, uh, the instance. Um, the author is Google Road. Yep. And then for the password. Now this will take a little bit of time to um, to get through. Sorry about that. All right. Well, I was able to sneeze and blow my nose, you know, while I was loading. So, okay. So from the navigation pane in Dev Studio, click app to open the app explorer. Okay. So in the app explorer, we right click assistance request, click create process and validate to create a validate rule. Uh huh. Okay. We have to wait until everything is finished loading. So before we can even consider clicking on the app. So, um, so I mean, we need to wait, unfortunately. So, Don't need that, don't need that. All right, there we go. So we now need to switch over to Dev Studio. And once again, we're dealing with the load times. Okay, so now we click on app. Uh, then we right click the assistance request to do the create process and validate. So, so we right click assistance request. Then we create process and validate. Okay, wait for that to load up. Okay, in the label field, enter validate card information. Oops. Okay, there it goes. Uh, click create and open to accept the remaining default settings and display the validate rule form. So. Everything else, they're saying, hey, you know, keep everything else, you know, let's go to road, you know, go apply to rule set and so on and so forth. So, crane open. Let that kind of go on through. In the property field, enter or select payment information, 
dot card number to apply the validation condition to the credit card number entered by the user. So Okay. So our number Okay, well, apparently I can't seem to get, oh wait, uh, the first one was payment information, so payment information, and I can't seem to get anything else from that, so. <sighs> then it doesn't allow for like the information contained within that property field. So, um, okay. Under conditions, click add to display the validation conditions window. So click and add. Let that load in. Okay. Under con, uh, yeah, right. Uh, in the select a function field, enter uh, select validation of property name using edit validate name fails. Now it's a drop down, so. You know what? What would be nice is if they could, you know, basically say, hey, you know, you want to pick one of these. There we go. So. Validation property name using edit valid name fails. Okay. Thankfully, I didn't need to, you know, paste in everything, but, you know, um, it would have been, it probably would have been nice if they had like a, an image there of this to kind of give it some context of like where it might be, but. Okay, the window updates to display two fields below the select a function field. In the validation of field, enter or select payment information card number as the property to test. So again, I doubt that I'll be able to do, you know, payment information and then like, you know, card, card number after that. Yeah, so. Um, in the using field, enter or select is digit in the edit validate rule to test. Um, now, as you can see, there's a lot here. Um, What is kind of sad about this is the fact that, you know, they're not actually using the, um, you know, they're not using the other function of um, parse integer. You know, they're using other functions you know, is integer, is letter, is digit, you know, is blank, is boolean, you know, they're using, using those other Java functions, but not, not parse integer, huh? Okay. Um, 
Now, I'm kind of curious. Um, when would I see if I go here? Let me look at the seniors code here, right? Um, so for our int position of zero, length is the value dot length, which I'm assuming, you know, the value is something that is it like a default value that will always be considered something that gets passed in, even though, you know, it's not, you know, this code here doesn't actually give that, you know, automatically. So, so I kind of, like I said, I kind of wish that they covered that a little bit more, but, um, you know, why is the value, you know, a default that can easily be used, but we move on. Um, if position is less than length, then we continue on with the, uh, um, you know, we continue on, you know, with the, the for loop. And then, of course, it adds a position, you know, uh, um, at the very end there. So, and it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, plus plus position or position plus plus. It really doesn't matter what you do there. Both are equally the same. It has to... It has to process this particular statement first, so um, before it can go to this statement. So, um, so, um, so it checks the the value, which obviously is a string. checks the character at, you know, the, you know, checks the character at that, you know, particular position for the value and checks to see whether or not it's, is a digit, which is, again, something that is, you know, already a, um, a Java function. It's, it's part of the, you know, the character class in Java. Uh, if it's not a digit, then it returns false. Now, here's the thing. They could have done this a lot simpler than this. They didn't need this for loop. You know, all they needed to do is do that, you know, if statement. You know, if, um, you know, if uh, integer dot, you know, parse number or, you know, parse integer the value you know, um, if, if that's true, return true. If not, then return false. That's all that they really needed to do. Okay. Um, because the, um, you're looking at a credit card number, you know, you're not adding any, um, you're not doing any kind of, you know, uh, decimal point or anything along those lines. Okay. And even if there was a, but let, let's say that someone put in the decimal point in that card number, right? Then the card number would fail because the character at would see the, you know, would look at that decimal point, see that it's not a digit and would, you know, would make it false. Okay. So, so it doesn't really, you know, um, this, this is fine when you're dealing with a fairly small number. Okay. Um, but, 
but you know using the parse int would probably be a lot faster um, actually I'm I'm not sh kind of curious uh, Java is is digit faster than is um, ours ticker. That doesn't really talk about they're not really talking about how fast it is overall. Um Okay. No, I mean that is true. You need do need a try catch for the uh parse end. I mean that that isn't you know <laughs> you know, you catch it if it's if it's false and it's false then you know. I would not look at performance. I mean, that's just... Uh, I, I really don't like when people say, you shouldn't worry about performance. No, you really should. Okay. Um, you know, people 
seem to like go ah you don't you shouldn't care about you know space you shouldn't care about performance blah 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 no you really should okay um you should still have that in the back of your mind when you're when you're working code because um you know just the amount of time that it takes you just to build um you know the fact that it takes uh minutes to load up the instance in this particular case you know that they're building a lot of things in a background that might not need to be built okay like like the um like the instance isn't going straight to the dev studio it could it could save a lot of time if it went straight to the dev studio on that okay it didn't need to load in everything on the app now you're taking more time to load in the app you know everything in the app before you even load in the dev studio okay that's that's you know it, it, it's it's performance performances like that that it's like you know you need to kind of look at you know what you can do faster okay uh if you're just adding more and more bloat on your um on your program then you're gonna get in and you're gonna get a program that takes hours to load if you're not careful you know um and no one would want that okay not even the developers would want that so So performance is something that you should consider, you know, so I don't really like what this guy is saying. I would not look at performance. No, you really should, you know, keep performance in mind. So, um, okay. Um, Let's see. Nice. I like when someone actually, you know, puts in you know, actual testable information. You know, I'm looking at Stack Overflow just to kind of give you guys a information on that. But this this one isn't necessarily checking the the is digit you know function. They're looking at parse int value of an integer converter. You know, which um, based off of their comparison, parse int was the winner. Um, in terms of overall speed, so, um, you know, if, you know, if there was a way to kind of do that with is digit, <laughs> you know, um, you know, that would, that would be kind of, um, interesting. But oh well, I'll I'll leave that for for now. Um, but I mean, again, you know they're they're basically saying, hey, 
this is for seniors to do when in fact it is like one of the most basic things that you should be learning as a programmer anyway so the fact that you know <laughs> the fact that it's you know made by a senior developer is really just kind of sad to be honest um but let's move on um okay we're we're kind of behind on this right at this moment in time i only got about 10 more minutes left before i sh really should uh end this so um okay so we got the is digit uh, in the message field enter credit card number contains an invalid character so and then period um Click Submit to complete the configuration of the validation condition. Okay. To the right of the additional validation, enter or select enter payment information to ensure the entered expiration date is before today. That's already kind of in there, so that's good. So s click save to complete the configuration of the validate rule. So there we go. Apply the validate rule to the enter payment information flow action. So in the app explorer, expand assistance request to process flow action. So Assistance request process flow action. Um, click enter payment information to op open the enter payment information flow action. Um, on the flow action rule form, click the validation tab to apply the validate rule when processing flow action. So, validation. In the validate field, enter or select validate card information to apply the validate rule you configured. Um, You already have that's where they have enter payment information in the same place as the validate. Okay, that's that's a little odd. Actually, hold on, let me let me delete that. Why it has enter payment information under validate, even though this is supposed to be a flow action, is uh, a bit odd. Not quite sure why that's there. Um, um, matter of fact, you know what? Let me go ahead and take a screenshot of that and go, what's, what's going on here? Yes, that's that's a bit odd. You know, I would like to know what is kind of happening there, for the most part. All right, but we move on. Um, so, click save to complete the conversion of a flow action. So save okay now we confirm the work in the header of the dev studio click create new assistance request so. 
you this is a request uh, enter in the customer information step or in the enter customer information step select h thomas uh, advance the case to the enter payment information step entering information as required in the card number field enter that so we're going to the enter payment information so vehicle is a flat tire now they want us to do the h thomas because he's not a like you know that it's not a gold star or gold coverage so they wouldn't necessarily need to worry about entering payment so hence the reason why you want the h thomas in there uh, don't need to worry about location um, you don't need to worry too much about the make and model so there we go okay uh, enter payment information and we want to put the uh, card number in there right so in the expiration date field enter a date that is in the past okay Well, it's not allowing us to do too much in the past, you know, so I'll just do that, I guess, because technically it's still in the past. By this point in time, it's currently 10-24-2023, so there you go. Um, click Submit, and then confirmation of the validation of the fields fails and error messages, error messages are displayed on the card number and expiration date fields why the, the expiration date fields i don't know but all right so card number card number contains an invalid character and expiration date is not valid so um in the card number field enter that number in the expiration date field enter a date that is in the future click submit and confirm that the case advances to the next stage um well make sure that the the message here matches with you know the message that you have up here credit card number contains an invalid character you know which it does so even though on this one i actually put a period in there so um we didn't have anything to do with the um the date so um, I don't know why they wanted us to do that, you know, expiration date portion, um, because that's, that's kind of outside the scope of what we've done. So, you know, I don't know what that was all about, um, but they want us to change the card number and they want us to put a date in the future so um and technically you can just probably just add you know the number to be super long you know because they don't have any limit to the card number on there so there you go so Okay. So it has been, it has gone on to the next stage and we can mark the challenge complete. Again, you know, why we can mark the challenge complete and not have it actually be tested, I don't really know. That's something that they are kind of doing now that it's like, feels kind of lazy but you know whatever we move on okay so i want to address the uh that one you know why is the flow action being shown under validate um so i'm kind of wondering why is 
slow action um, label in able to be seen through the validation. Is there another validation of the same name? Um, I found it strange that um, that the name of the flow action is automatically added to the validation field. Why is it doing that? Also, we didn't do anything for the for the date itself. Why is there a test for the date being in past? Sharon, we have done the validation test on that. It's also too bad that we couldn't create the edit validation rule ourselves to see the steps that were in there. Uh, yes, that would most likely be given to a new employee, seeing that it really wasn't that difficult to create that validation rule itself. Okay, so that's going to be it for uh, this particular challenge. We're done with it. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next topic, um, which five topics, 50 minutes. We got ourselves quite a bit of information coming up next time there, folks. So we're going to be probably covering each one of these as, you know, and their own hour long videos. So look forward to that. Or, you know, we're probably going to be, 
kind of going slowly through these to make sure that we're kind of understanding everything there um, so that we can you know process it and get it ready for our certification test so so yeah um, but that's going to be it for today's uh, Pega journey uh, Pega certification journey that we're on again um, you know uh, if you can help out with the YouTube algorithm on the video that would be fantastic it would really help out um, check out my other playlist that I have uh, if you're so inclined um, um, check out the description for you know social media links uh, links to my patreon links to my throne to help me out directly or you know uh, or if you want to help out indirectly with everybody on the uh, on our you know, the stream team that I created, uh, check out Team Robot. So, um, you know, just looking to try to expand that team out some more. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I want to thank you all for joining me on this. Uh, hopefully you, uh, or, you know, hopefully we got some decent information out of it. Um, so, um, again, comments are welcome, uh, questions are welcome, so, you know, don't be afraid to ask them, and yeah, that's gonna be it, so thank you very much for watching, I appreciate it, hopefully I catch you next time, until then, take care, have a good night, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.